Hello beautiful friends, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be answering a very common question you have for me. Whether you're my client or you're writing in on my YouTube channel or you're emailing me, I get this one a lot and so I finally wanna answer. The question is, Candace, is it okay to stop talking to a family member or to separate myself from my entire family if they are toxic? Here's what I have to say. beautiful friends welcome to my channel if you're new please click the little subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications when I release new videos and if you've been with me for a while thank you so much and welcome back I also want to just recommend that you hit the little join button if you want to become a YouTube member which means you'll get extra perks you'll get your names mentioned in my video which I'm going to do right now for new members you will get live Q&A's with me you will get access to a uh, live one of my private Facebook groups and the last thing is that I just added Tier 4, you will get homework assignments to work on from my videos or exercises to do. So today I just want to mention some new members. Kristen Valdemars Doriter. Nope, I totally messed that up. You should email me and let me know how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> Denise P., Jacqueline Parker, Tiffany Graven, Christian Ambler, and Bethany. Thank you so much for just joining um, I did mention, I believe, the other ones last week, but thank you for joining this week. I'm so happy to have you as members. I will be writing some things for you guys in the members area on YouTube um, so that we can get to know each other better. So today's subject, Candace, can I stop talking to a family member or separate myself from my entire family if they are toxic? And I know this is very hard for people because we have this guilt complex. It's your family. It's your mother. It's your father. This is my take. Of course you can stop talking to them. In fact, having no contact with super toxic people, whether you're, they're your family member or not, is going to be hard for you because of societal's ideal of what family should be and it's your mom, they can do whatever they want or it's your dad, they can act however they want. Or, you know, one of my clients in my emotional rehab group was just telling me how if she stops calling her mother, she will never hear from her. And she feels so guilty, like there's something wrong with me. I didn't do enough to get my mom to be interested in me. And so what I did, because this client has a daughter of her own, I did a little role play with her. And I said, okay, I want you to picture something. Your daughter is grown up now, and she's not calling you at all. She's got her own life going on, boyfriends, girlfriends, life, fun things. You're not on her top list. Who knows why? But you're not. Would you stop contacting her, reaching out to her, and wondering or worrying about her? She said, of course not. I said, great. So... What a toxic person would do is make it your fault that I'm not calling you. This is very manipulative, right? This is emotional manipulation. Well, you're not calling me, so I'm not calling you. But see, I kind of use it as an example. If I'm in friendship with someone and they're not calling me or they're not checking in on me, but we've been friends for 20 years, let's say, right? I would absolutely still call and check in on them because I would think it's weird for not hearing from them. I think it's odd that they don't want to know about my life. And I would have a conscious conversation. If it didn't go well and the friend was like, eh, I don't know, I'm just busy or, you know, nothing. We don't need to be friends. And when I was telling one of my clients this, she goes, but after 20 years, that's your friend. You've been through so much. I go, great. And now it's time to not. See, one of the things, I had a girlfriend tell me last week, she said, Candace, you know, friendships are, go through seven-year cycles. I was like, oh, kind of like relationships. Friend, of course, right? She goes, yeah. She goes, think about the people that come into your life now. Like me and her just started being friends like about a year and a half, two years ago. And super aligned. All of our conversations are always aligned, always make sense. Same interests. Differences too, but wonderful differences that are complementary. And there's no games. Like if I don't hear from her and there's no weird feeling, it's, hey, I didn't hear from you or vice versa. Hey, you want to do something? Yeah, let's do something. Not, hey, yeah, let's figure it out sometime in the future when we never have a plan. You know, those people where you're like, we're not friends. I pride myself in having friendships now where we want to be friends with each other. If you say you want to do something, we make it happen. 
we set a date right away. We talk immediately. There's none of this game playing, like, I don't really want to talk to you, but I'll say that I do. What is that? That's an outgrown friendship. It's very hard to do that with family members, but the truth is seven-year cycles. There might be a few years where you don't talk and then they come back again. It shouldn't be this guilt thing, right? Society makes it feel makes us feel guilty. Society is saying, oh, you outgrew that friendship, but you should definitely stay connected. Why? We need to make room for ones that validate. You can let people go in your family or friend circle and not feel guilty. You can say, I love them, but right now it's not aligned. Maybe it'll be aligned later. It doesn't mean you have to stop loving and disconnect from your own heart. It means, of course I love this person, but they're not treating me right right now, if it's a family member. Of course I love them um, because they're family, but the truth is I don't love who they are. Totally fine. Sure, they're my family, but I'm not going to talk to them for this lifetime. I'm going to have my soul family that I choose that are totally aligned with me and treat me right. Think about how crazy it sounds to, let's take a sister or a brother. Say you have a brother who abuses you emotionally, who does mean things, who doesn't honor your boundaries. Are you going to say, oh, I love him. He's my brother. No, you're going to say, that's my brother. Unfortunately, we don't have a relationship because he doesn't know how to treat me right. See, sometimes family members need to know that you have boundaries and you're okay to let them go if they don't love you or respect you within those boundaries. It's okay to let people go. And when it's a family member, they think, ah, it's family, get away with everything. That's why there's a lot of dysfunctional families out there, in my opinion. You know, I've been in a marriage for seven years and have we had our ups and downs? Yeah, everyone does. It's called being human, but it's how you work that out. I'm not going to say, oh, we've been married so long, who gives a shit? Do that. No, I'm going to say we've been married so long and I respect you as a human in my, in my vortex, in my home, in my experience. And because I respect you as a person and your boundaries, that's why we have a functional experience. Dysfunction doesn't come from healthy people who respect each other's boundaries and love each other. Dysfunction comes from things that aren't being said, things that aren't being addressed, things that aren't transparent, things that aren't being addressed in a way of consciousness. If you're conscious and the person in your family isn't and they have no desire to be, it's probably not going to be a good ride. And you have the permission to not talk to that person. You, you also have the permission not to love people in your family. Just because you're tied through genes does not mean you have to put up with shit behavior. It also doesn't mean you have to put up with people not seeing you for who you truly are or taking you as your truth, but instead of projecting onto you all day. I have this male client who is struggling with his older mother because his older mother refuses to see him at 52 years old as who he's become, and she still projects him as a child, even though a lot of the projection she had on him as a child wasn't even accurate because it was her own shame, right? So he's having a hard time. He's like, she won't, she just won't see me, my accomplishments, my heart. And I said, and sometimes they won't. And in that situation, you get the opportunity to speak your truth. And if it doesn't get received well, you also have a decision of how much time you actually spend with this person and how much weight you put in their opinions and their feelings about you. It's about you loving you. What would someone who loves themselves do? Allow you allow access to you from people who are just going to hurt you, tear you down, disappoint you, and invalidate you, or finally see them for who they are regardless of you. Observe them, let them be who they are, and then choose what's right for your life. I hope this helps some of you. Just so you know, all my links for all my courses, all my discounts, now inner work group coaching has just started. All of that is below. If you want, if you wish to talk about this on a weekly basis in my monthly membership, I meet every Friday and we talk face-to-face -face over Zoom about all these scenarios. If you'd like a community of people to do this and a year and a half of content, please click Truth Room Tribe below. And I love you guys so much. Please share and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you soon. Namaste.